Welcome to Intro to Procedural Modeling, Lesson 8. So in this particular lesson, we are going to start to build out the blueprints, basically, or the basic geometry that will end up being our procedural stair asset that we're going to create. Now, the nice thing about uh, using Houdini and creating these types of assets, as we've been seeing throughout all these lessons in this course, is that we can actually um, start to modify the parameters of our particular um, stair model here and everything actually will update appropriately whereas if we were using um, something like Maya or Max um, any types of these changes would take um, quite a considerable, cons considerable amount of time um, just to make sure that the model stays clean and the UVs are updated so with Houdini we get all that because we're building in a non-destructive fashion, okay? So what we wanna do is we wanna walk through the steps that are needed to create a procedural asset like this, all right? So I'm gonna jump back out to my scene root level over here. I'm gonna turn off these completed stairs and I'm gonna create a new geometry node, all right? And I'm just gonna call this stairs for now. I'm gonna jump inside that node and delete that default. So to start any of these types of procedural models, we need to decide uh, what to focus on first. So the major portions of this particular model are the length of the stairs for the base and the height of the stairs overall, okay? So basically what we want to do is we want to start to find that and then we need to find the angle of the particular stair based off of this length and that height. And then we need to build out the construction lines that build each of the stairs. And then basically just skin between two polygons that have this shape. Okay? So it's really kind of the, um, the plan of action there when we start to build these things out. So I'm going to jump back in here and get all that set up. So I'm going to turn off my completed stairs. So the first thing I want is a line. So I'm going to drop down this line. And this is going to be called the length line. All right, just so I can keep things um, clear. As your graphs start to get larger and larger, um, it's best to name your nodes. That way you can find your place in the graphs themselves. So this is gonna be called the height line. There we go. All right, so the height line is all set up appropriately. Let's give it a distance of two. So this is gonna define the height of our stairs. This line actually needs to be pointing in the positive Z direction, not straight up and Y, because this is going to be our length line right there. Oops, did I just change that? Yes, I did. Let's do that again there. All right, let's put the height line back up, and let me actually put the length line, a positive two, inside of uh, our scene view there. All right, so now we have the length line and we have the height line. So what we need to do is actually draw the diagonal line between these two. So what we can do is we can actually merge these two together. So let's do this. I'm going to merge with the merge node. So I'm going to take the height line, take that length line, I'm going to merge those two together. And now what we have actually are two lines merged together such that their endpoints still are right over each other. Okay, so what we can do is we can actually join these two particular lines together using a join node. So I'm going to hit tab and type out join, like so. And when you, do, when you do that, you'll notice that now we just have a single point down here. So that's why it's useful to use these display flags up here. So you can actually see if you have duplicate points sitting right on top of each other. All right, so now I have exactly three points in my particular mesh. All right, because we join those. So what I want to do is actually get a line that is drawn be between the point two and point one. So what we can do is we can actually delete point zero. So if I go and drop down a delete node, I'm going to place this over here. And let's try um, to delete. We're going to delete selected. We're going to delete a point. And I want to delete point zero. Bam. There you go. We now have a diagonal line that is updated by the the two values of those two lines distances. All right, so already we've started to build in some proceduralism to our particular stair model over here, okay? All right, 
So now what we want to do is we want to go through the process of creating the stair lines or the outline of the stairs basically. Okay, so let's start doing that. What I want to do is take this diagonal, I'm going to resample it. All right, and I want to do just maximum segments because I want control over how many segments are actually in this particular line because this will define how many stairs we have. All right, so now we have five segments. <clears throat> Very good. And so what I want to do now is actually just get um, this portion. All right, so I want to get just this portion, this single segment out of this particular line itself, okay? And to do that, we're going to utilize another delete node. So I'm going to type down delete, place that down. And at this point, I need to make this procedural because the user could add more stairs or less stairs. But you'll notice that in the line itself, the point number never changes. It's always point 0 and point 0.1. All right, so we can just delete. I can type in, uh, first set it to points, right? You can type in 0 space 1 to isolate out just those, but then invert my selection, and I end up with just that single point there. All right. <clears throat> So now what we need to do is we need to define the height and the length of the actual stair. And you'll notice that what we've done is we've actually created a smaller triangle right here, which is basically what we need. So I just need to be able to draw the, the height line and that length line for this triangle. And that's simple enough. All we need to do is create a couple more variations here of this particular line. So let's actually create a transform node because what I can do with this diagonal is I can flatten it out using a zero value for my Y scale up here. So I just added a transform node. I'm going to flatten this out. So now that, that that line is actually sitting straight on the ground, I can merge it together with my previous diagonal line up here, the one we isolated out. All right, so we'll merge those together. And what we have is the start of a triangle. Alrighty. So in this case, what we can do is we need to, to join those particular curves. So let's do a join. So we join those, so now we have exactly three points. That just makes sure, or that just ensures that we will actually always have just those three points instead of four points. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so now what we want to do is delete zero again. So I'm going to just put down a delete node, and we'll delete zero. And make sure you have points. Now I have my link or my height line. So here you'll notice that I have my length line and I have my height line. And that defines basically how high and how deep that particular stair should be. Okay, so let's actually get this all back together here. So what I want to do is merge these two guys together now. So I have my length line and my height line and again join them so we only have those three points like so perfect so zero one two all right so just with the those couple nodes there I mean what, what do we have maybe like six or seven nodes we've been able to actually define the uh, height and length of the stairs we're able to define the angle of the stairs using the height and length and we're also able to create the height and length of each of those stair steps that is going to fit into this particular length. So what we want to do now is what we want to copy. Okay, so we want to use a copy node to copy this particular shape, right, to every single point on this particular path or on the diagonal. In order to do that, we actually need to get this particular um, piece of geometry, all right, this stair length and height back to the zero position um, in the world, okay? And what we can do is we can utilize the, um, the Z min, basically, or the Z max of this resample line, all right? As you saw in uh, lesson two with transforming, because we just need to figure out how far out we are. And that is the Z max of this diagonal line, or the length line as well. We can also use that length line. Okay, so what I can do is I can actually transform it, the negative distance of this 
length or the length line. So let's do that now. I'm going to put down a transform node. And I'm going to copy off the distance of this length line up here. Let's copy that distance. And let's paste it into this new transform where our stair shape is being defined. And I want to move it back in Z. So I'm going to paste that relative reference. And you notice it actually went the other way because we are giving it a positive value. So let's actually just negate that with a negative symbol. And bam, we are now back at the center of the world. And that is perfect. But we also need to transform it down by a little bit because we want this particular point, this zero point, okay, to be copied to every position. Or actually, we don't necessarily need to do that. If we take a look at our length line, because our zero center is right there, it should just copy. Yeah, so actually, let's make it simple on ourselves and just do that for now. So everything I just said about having to recenter this downwards is a lie. Sorry about that. All right. So let's actually copy um, the stair shape now to that particular diagonal line. So I'm going to hit tab on the keyboard, type out copy. All right. So this is our template because these are all the points we want to copy to. Oops. All right. So let's do that. And this is our shape, our primitive we want to copy that's centered in the world. All right. So there we go. We actually have those guys being copied, but you'll notice that they are being copied sideways. Well, inside of the copy node, we can turn off the transform using template point attributes. And you'll notice now we have a perfect stair shape. All right. But you'll also notice that we're getting this endpoint. And we don't need that because that's where the stairs actually flatten out and there's not no need for this last stair. So really, in this resample node right here where we define our our, uh, our angle of our stairs basically we don't need the last point so this is actually a very interesting um, use for the delete node and something we haven't seen yet so inside of the delete node we can delete points all right we're going to delete selected but what we can do is actually get the number of points from um, the resample so we can actually type in dollar n which is a global variable that Houdini provides us. All right, so when I hit enter, you'll notice the last point has now been deleted. So $n actually is that last point. Okay, so it's got a value of six or yeah, eight basically. All right, so it deleted number eight for us. So let's actually then just wire that in. So I'm going to move this particular line that's being pumped into the copy for the templates, you can actually click on the line and just rewire it like that. And what we get now are the perfect stairs. And if we compare that to the height, so if I were to turn on my actual <clears throat> height line, it looks like we actually don't need the last point, this last point either. So we could do a further um, delete basically. like that. All right. And so basically uh, what I'm going to do now is remove, let's remove the another point and just see what we get here. So I'm going to delete and we can do that dollar n again, dollar n. Let me untemplate this here. And we'll set this to points and let's rewire that out. Go to copy. And let's put on our height line. And now you'll see that we're actually a little bit below. So what we need to do is we actually need to um, get it so that the next iteration actually fits appropriately in this line. So I don't need that last delete node. All right, so that's perfect right there. So this guy is actually meeting up perfectly with the, uh, the stairs right there, okay? But what I need to do is get rid of the extra height that the last copy is producing for us. So let's work on that now. So 
So in order to do that, what we need to do is we actually need to create um, more of like a tabletop. So we need a line that actually is going to define that tabletop for us, and we can move the height line out by that amount. All right, so let's actually create a new line all the way at the top here. All right, and you'll notice that your graph is gonna to start to get uh, larger and larger as we start to do more operations. Now, um, just as a side note, there's a great way to start organizing all your nodes as you start working inside of Houdini, and these are called net boxes. So what we can do is we can actually select a bunch of, uh, of the nodes and hit uh, Control N, and that will place those nodes into a movable box, so you're not having to select each individual node all the time. So, for instance, uh, this creates basically the stair shape, so we can name this net box the stair shape. All right, you can even colorize them, so if you hit C, as in cat, on the keyboard, and select just the net box, you can give it a color. Then hit C to make the color box go away. And so it just allows you to keep things nice and organized. Um, another great feature to stay organized as well is to hit the S key on the keyboard a couple times and you can cycle through different ways to visualize uh, the node lines, which, whichever is most comfortable for you. I usually like to leave it on these ones nice and clean. All right, so let's actually take care of our table line now. So this will be where the stairs actually flatten out, okay, as they get up to the, the, the topmost height. So this is gonna be called the table line, all righty. And I'm gonna place this down Actually, no, we need to put it over here because I want to add on to this length line, basically, over there. All right, so you notice that we have the length line, but then what we need to do is push the height line back a little bit so we have room for that extra stair at the top over there, okay? So what I'm going to do is actually point this table line in the negative Z direction. All right, put that to zero. And we're going to make the distance 0.5 for now because we, we're gonna let users define the length of that uh, table line, basically. <clears throat> All right, so what we can do now is actually, we're gonna have to do a couple things, but basically what we can do is uh, I'm going to delete point zero, basically, from this line, so I'm gonna get rid of that point. So let's come into a delete node over here. I'm gonna set it to points, I'm gonna hit delete, and I can copy the height line basically over to that. So I can say copy. There we go. And I'm going to copy the height line to that deleted point. And yeah, let's actually move the table line over here. Let's we'll keep our graph a little bit cleaner. All right. So now what we have is the height line moved back by 0.5 and we have control over it now with this table line distance. So I can move that height line around. All right, so if I were to template this by holding down control on the keyboard and clicking the pink flag there, and then turning on the final result of our stairs, you'll notice now that we have the perfect distance. Okay, so we have all the curves in place, except we actually need to lift the uh, stairs off the ground as well. Okay, so what I need to do is I need to find out the length, all right, or the arc length of this particular height so I can add that on and do a ground offset to the whole system here before we um, merge it all together, okay? So basically, let's uh, do that right now. So to do this, we are going to utilize um, things called attributes, all right? So I'm gonna come into the section of the graph where I actually find the, the height line for the stair. All right, so now we have our height line here. All right, so what I want to do is I actually want to create an attribute in here, and that attribute is going to store that length value, okay? So I'm going to type out attribute create and drop that node in here, like so. All right, actually, and we don't need, actually need to connect it to the whole graph. What we can do is just branch it off and allow access to this particular attribute. So this is going to be stair height value, basically. Alrighty, and I'm going to call the um, the attribute. I'm going to give the attribute a name, so it's like giving a variable name. So again, it's going to be stair height value. Alrighty, and so what I want to do now is actually utilize a simple function that Houdini provides us 
to uh, get the length of this particular line and that is called uh, the arc length. So I can actually start typing out arc and then you'll notice that we'll get this little pop down and we have a function called arc len. All right, and this particular function is waiting for me to give it a string surface node or the name of a, a node that we want to capture the data from. So in this case, I want delete three. So I need to type out two quotation marks, dot, dot, and then do delete three. That basically jumps me out of this node into this node so I can get access to it. Okay. And then what I want to do is define the primitive number. All right. So in this case, because I only have one primitive, you can find this out by turning on this flag right here. All right. If I come back, you'll notice that I only have a single primitive. Oops. Turn off point numbers. So we're going to get, we need to get the length from primitive zero in the delete three node. So let's go back in here and type out zero. And then we also need the U value. So the U start and the U stop. Now we want the total length of that line. So we just want to go from zero to one. Bam. So now you'll notice that we actually, if I click on this field right here, we actually get a value. We know we're 0 0.285 off the ground. All right. And so we want to offset the stairs by that amount, the whole shape of the stairs. All right. So let's actually create a new line down here. So I'm going to create a new line and I'm going to call this ground offset. Let me do a capital. There we go. Ground offset. So this ground offset now, we want to be able to give this ground offset line the same height value as the stair height value. All right. But currently this particular attribute is only assigned to the points in this particular um, node. And that's because we're telling it to be on the point. Okay. What we will actually want to do to make this more uh, globally available to the whole system, the whole graph, we want to make it a detail. And by doing that, basically what happens is now any node can access that value. And we don't have to have this particular node hooked into the entire graph anywhere. So we just made it a detail um, value. So then again, if we go and we open up, if I split the panes here over here. So split pane top bottom, split the panes and we do a details view uh, right here. And you'll notice that we have different ways to display option in our details view. We have uh, points, point numbers, we have uh, geometry, and then we have details. And you'll notice that in our detail value now, we actually get information about what we're broadcasting out to the whole graph. All right, so we're getting this stair height value and the stair height value is the string name and then the value that we can use is this all caps. Okay. Or we can also use the detail function. All right. So that's what I want to show off basically. So for the distance for the, of this line, what I want to do, you can see that we are all the way over here in the center of the world here. You turn off those primitive numbers. So what I want to do is just type out detail and you'll notice that we get that function. And what we need to do is we need to give it the attribute create node name. So we need dot dot forward slash stair height value. Okay. And then we're waiting for the string attribute name and that is going to be stair height value. And we want the attribute index, which is zero because we only have one input there. And there you go. We now have a line that is that exact height. All right. I know that was probably a lot of work there just for such a little thing, but what we have now is a point is a line that automatically gets, um, set its distance is set by the angle of the stairs and how many stairs we have and all that stuff. So it's all procedural. So what we can do is we can actually offset these stairs and our height line. Okay. So we have this line now over here and we have this guy right there. And so basically I want to push this whole model up by this height, this graph. Okay. So let's do that. So I'm going to do a copy and I just need to delete off that first point. So here I don't need the 
zero points. So I'm going to set this delete node to points, set this to zero, and feed that into my copy template, do that. And now you notice the stairs are offset by that same amount. Perfect. So then let's do the same for our height line as well. So let's start to get all of our data together here. So I'm going to do another copy over here. Like so, and then let's feed in that height line that's being offset down here. So there we go. It's perfect. <clears throat> All right. So let's merge those two guys together. There we go. And then finally, let's join these guys. And you'll notice that we're actually getting that little bit of offset up there. And that's just because we want the tolerance to be all the way zero, not all the way one. All right, so now we are all set. The only thing that we need to do now is actually um, get it so that we can complete the bottom half here. And so we have the length line for all of this. Um, and all we need to do is create those um, those extra sections down here of that ground offset. So we have that line. All we need to do is we need to get this start and end point from this whole line here. All right. And so to do that, let's just, um, we did a join. So then let's do a fuse node. And the fuse node will delete any extra points. There we go. So now we have this uh, vertex order that goes from 2, 1, 0, 3, and then it goes all the way through, and we have no more duplicates anymore. So you can see the difference when I turn on that fuse node. All those points are now fused together. So what we can do is we can actually drop down a sort node. So let's put down a sort node. Take a look at this. Now the sort node will allow us to actually create a perfect uh, vertex order. So if I change the drop down to by vertex order, you'll notice that I get a perfect number sequence that goes from 0 to 1 to 2 to 3 all the way to 16. So now what I can do is I can delete just those um, start and end points and then delete non-selected basically. So to do that, basically I want to delete point zero and then point dollar n, right? And set it to points. That'll give me everything in the middle, but if I invert that delete, I get the two points where we need to copy the ground offset to. Alrighty. And then I just want to transform this so that it's flat on the ground. Okay, so then what we can do is we can type in $y max and negate that. Right, so we move down instead of up. And now we have our length line um, that allows us to copy those two points to, or those, this ground offset line to. So I'm going to copy that, create another copy node over here. So those are template lines or points. And then our primitive is that ground offset line. And there we go. So now what we can do is we can join all that together in one operation. And we're not going to blend. All right. And then what I want to do is pull in the top part. So let's merge together the top and the bottom half, like so. And you'll see that we now have the shape of stairs. All right. And I just need to do one more thing to clean it up. Just join it. There we go. And then let's fuse. Make sure we don't have any duplicates, points. There we go. Perfect. And let's sort it so we get a good vertex order. Just as a final cleanup to it. So it's a vertex order. And there you go. So zero all the way to 18. And there we go. We now have a uh, perfect staircase shape. All right, so that completes the blueprint portion. In the next lesson, we are going to um, finish this up and create the volume and just put on a little bit of color.
Thanks so much. Welcome to Intro to Procedural Modeling, Lesson 9. So we're going to pick up where we left off in Lesson 8 and actually turn this into some geometry and get it skinned so that we actually have a width to our stairs. And then finally just give it some color and show some more um, nodes basically that we have available to us that always come up in the procedural modeling workflows. All right, so let's get started. Uh, I'm going to actually start this out by um, just organizing this out a little bit more. I'm going to create a net box around these guys and around these guys. All right, and give them some color. And then I always like to give the final net box the the blue color. All right, I'm going to space these guys out a little bit more just so I can see them. All right, so we don't really have a ton of nodes, and we've already created quite a bit of uh, work in terms of geometry and getting the shape right. Okay. Um, so we're doing pretty good. I'm going to organize these guys up here. And I always like to uh, color my creation or my lines, the main lines basically, in my node networks yellow. Uh, it just helps me identify it faster. All right. So we've done that. We'll clean that up a little bit. Uh, what we need to do is actually turn this into geometry. And all we need to do for that is actually come up to our join here where we are joining the bottom half. Or the, um, yeah, the, it was actually down here, sorry. Where we were joining the bottom half with the top half and we did a fuse. All right, all we need to do in the join node is actually hit wrap, wrap last to first and that will connect everything perfectly. So now we actually have a polygon here that we can use. All right, so now all we need to do is create a uh, width line. So let's create a new line. I'm gonna call this my width line. And let's take a look at this guy. So I actually want this to be in the X direction. But I want the line actually, I want the line's middle to start in the world's center. And I want the two points to be equally distant from the world's center, okay? So to do that, uh, what I'm gonna do is take the distance, this distance value right here, right? Because I can move this particular line in the X direction here. So I want to move it by the distance. So if I do that, I move it out one, but then I want to multiply that by times 0.5. So I only get half of that and then negate that. And that now creates a system where I have two points that are equidistant from the world center there. Okay. And that is perfect because now we have two points I can copy our final stair shape to. So let's do that now. So I'm going to hit copy. Create that, so I'll put in the template points from our width node. Put in the primitive that we want to copy, and there you go. So now we have the two sides of our stairs all ready to go. But you notice that one of the sides isn't actually facing in the correct direction, okay? And if we turn on our primitive numbers here, you'll notice that we have a primitive ID of zero and one. So what I can do is I can actually delete off one, or we can do zero in that case, right? Because what I need to do is actually um, <clears throat> get rid of of the uh, other face that's facing in the correct way. All right, so now that I have just this particular face isolated out here, okay? We can use a reverse node to reverse its direction. And then copy off that delete node where we deleted off the original and we'll say, we'll invert that. So delete non-selected. So then we converge these two guys back together and their faces or their geometry is facing in the correct direction. There we go. So once we have that, all we need to do now is create a skin. So we can just use the original here so I'm going to hit skin and that will basically loft those two guys together. And again, we'll have to reverse the direction of the faces. So I'm going to drop down a reverse node. Bam. And what we can do then is merge that together with our sides. And what we have now are stairs. 
Alrighty, so let me turn off those numbers and you know we can start to go through and verify that everything's working. So if I increase this stair count, you'll notice that we're getting the appropriate adjustments there. Uh, we should be able to increase the, the height of our stairs as well. Uh, we should have control over that length. And we have control over that table depth. All right, so we're actually looking pretty good now. So let's actually just do a couple uh, cleanup things and some aesthetic things um, here. And what I want to do is actually drop in a facet node. All right, because I want to make all the normals um, hard in this case. So I'm going to hit cusp normals. I'll put it to something like 45. And then we'll post compute normals and that basically makes sure that everything is nice and clean when it gets exported. All righty. So now we have nice stairs there. And let me actually bundle this up in a netbox. So control N, like so. We'll give it some color with blue because it's a final area there. So then what I want to do is utilize something called the clip node and clip off just the, the sides of this particular piece of geometry. Okay, so let's take a look at that. So I'm going to hit tab, type clip, and Let's take a look at that. So if I hit enter, it's just like the curve node. So if I select the node over here in the network view and hit enter, you can see that I get this gizmo that allows me to actually clip the geometry by a direction. All right. So what I can do is I can actually point this, you know, straight in the X direction. So let's do that. We'll do X. And if I leave it by default here, I can actually get half the model back or I cut it off. And we can do the same thing like with the delete node, we can invert that selection by saying primitives below the plane, primitives above the plane, below, and then we have all primitives, which then puts a line right down the middle for you. <laughs> Alright, so what I want to do is actually situate this all the way to the minimum x distance, and as we've seen before, we can use the dollar uh, $x min value. Did I type that right? X, X min. Nope. It is not wanting to do that. So we're going to have to use the BB box in this case. So the bounding box of facet one. So we're going to say facet one. So that's the previous node. Alrighty. And we want the D X min. And that will put it all the way to the most minimum x uh, distance of the bounding box of the stair object. So then I just want to subtract off a value of like 0 0.2 maybe, or actually I want to add on a value. Okay, and then we'll keep just below, and that basically gives me a little slice of the model. So that's the basically the left side there. That's the stripe, because we're going to color these different colors. All right, so then I'm going to create a new clip node over here. And I want to actually clip off the other side. So again, I need this point in the X direction. And I want to do the bounding box of facet one, right, or the node above it, facet one. And we want the uh, DX max this time, minus 0.2. And that gives me just that little slice for the right side. So now I have the right side stripe. Alrighty. So for each one of these, we need to create a duplicate because what I want to do is actually get the um, bottom portion of the model. Okay. And actually, we can we can start to string these together. So basically, um, let me duplicate this off here, like so. And I'm going to keep all the primitives above it, right? Because I want that centerpiece. And then we can actually feed in that result, like so, okay, to get that right side stripe. And then we'll copy off that right side stripe node. And we'll say primitives below the plane. And that should give us the exact middle portion, okay, of 
the whole entire stairs. So we have the right side, we have the left side, and we have the middle portions. So at this point, we can merge these guys back together. All right, and a quick way to merge is to select all nodes you want to merge together using the shift button and then just feed it into a merge. And there you go. So now you'll notice that we have geometry just on the edges. And we can adjust those guys with this value right here. Like so. All right, but we're just going to leave it there. Okay. And what I want to do now is actually bundle these guys up into sets. So for color sets. So I want the stripes to go in, into one. Okay, so I'm going to disconnect that. And then the middle portion is going to have its own thing. So then I can just merge those guys together. So now I just have two inputs in my merge. So what I can do now is actually just drop down a color node. So this will be the middle color. And this will be the stripe color. Like so. And we're going to drop that down to something grayish. And we'll give the stripe colors Oops, I did the wrong one. Oh, anyway. this, this is the stripe merge. So it's just stripes. And then we need another color node, sorry. Then we have another color node. This is the stripe color, like so. And we'll give this uh, that Game Tutor orange. A little more red there. Sweet. And there you have it. That is how you build procedural stairs inside of Houdini. So I'm just going to clean this up again and give that that blue color. This is going to be final stairs. All right. So just with a few set of nodes there, we were able to create procedural stairs that allow us to change the amount of stairs that we have. It offsets from the ground appropriately and automatically. Um, it allows us to change the height, the, the depth, and the table depth. All right, so that concludes basically intro to procedural modeling using Houdini. Um, if you want more information or have any more questions, I would definitely visit uh, GameTutor.tv and watch some of our other Houdini courses. Thanks so much.